outside the RNLI because on the 4th of March the RNLI are going to be 200 years old. It was a charity started by Sir William Hillary and in the time of the 200 years it's saved 144,000 lives. Pretty impressive number when you consider that it's completely funded um, by local people and general supporters. And um, it's also helped us in lots and lots of ways. So we'd like to talk, bring to you One Boat, Salty Lass and the RNLI. So the first time we called the RNLI, it was not really our idea. <laughs> we were stuck outside Port Patrick in increasing swells and it was getting very difficult to control the boat on the entrance to the harbour. We called them from where we were because we could see them looking at us from the lifeboat station and we thought we could talk to them directly, which you can't. But we got the attention of Bangor Coast Guard, which is that building over there. And um, the Coast Guard said, you know, do you need assistance? And I really thought that meant, did you need some advice? Would you like to talk to someone? I didn't know how it worked. It was like day three of owning the boat. Um, so I said, yes, please, that'd be nice. And they said, hold your position for 10 minutes. Before we knew it, out came the lifeboat and it flattened the sea, took us in. And they gave us a pretty good talk, not in an unfriendly way, but they gave us lots of really good advice. And I'm going to pass that advice on to you at the end of the video. So I'm going to talk to you about the second time that the RNLA rescued us. And that was when we were anchoring just outside Houth. What happened is we'd had quite a few unsuccessful anchorings. So we'd talked to quite a lot of people about anchoring. And one of the things that had come up was that we should really use a uh, anchor marker because it does various things. It, first of all, it shows you where the anchor is, but also, if you've got a foul bottom or anything like that, you can use the anchor marker to actually assist you uh, to lift up your anchor. So we anchored just outside Houth and the anchoring was great. We'd slept a really, really good night. So that was brilliant. So the next morning, um, we decided we were going to move on. So what happened was we uh, were lifting up, we got the engine started and uh, Beverly went towards where the anchor marker was. And the rope was quite close to the boat when I realised I had forgotten the most important piece of equipment and that was a boat hook. I had completely forgotten to bring one um, when we got near. So what it meant was I went back to the cockpit to get the boat hook. And in the meantime, Beverly said to me, she said, whatever you do, make sure I don't run over the anchor marker. I don't seem to be able to get anything right. I'd really do try my little best. So what happens was a few seconds later, the prop just stops turning and Beverly turned the engine off. Oh look, dawn's coming up. <sighs> it's going to be another interesting day here on Salty Lass. We discussed what we could do. Could we sail back? Could we do various things? Could we just stay there? There was a lot of gossip, back and forwards conversation before we called the Coast Guard and informed them about our situation. And we asked them what we should do. And they basically just said, stay there. The RNLI are going to come out.
The third time that we um, encountered the RNLI was the one time that we really intentionally called them. And that was in Menai Strait when the exhaust elbow cracked, but we didn't know that. We just knew that something was up with the engine. We had the floorboards beginning to float, water filling the boat, and we didn't hesitate. We just put out a pan pan straight away. Ironically, we had the camera set up for coming to a mooring buoy, which was about half a mile away. Um, but it was very, very dark, pitch black, so we were wired for sound. <laughs> so you got the sound track and not the vision. Pan, 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 pan. This is sailing yacht, salty lass, salty lass. We are 100 metres south of Bumaris Pier. We are taking water aboard. Um, in that particular one, we had a plan B outlined because at that stage we got good at plan Bs and we went straight on the mirroring ball and started to tackle it and the RNLI came out and double checked everything, made sure we were safe. We were very, very glad to see them and it was lovely of them to do it. Yes, the RNLI are on our boat again. <laughs> Yeah, the water is going down. Yeah. So that was just the incident where we fully intended to call them. And once again, I'll just use the, the opportunity just to differentiate the main calls. Mayday is somebody in the boat is in trouble and they really need help. It's life-threatening stuff. People are going to die. Pan Pan is the boat's in trouble, but we think everybody on board is all right. And it's not really mega, mega urgent, but you know. The last one you get is Securite, which is really an informational thing, just letting you know that there's something like logs floating in the water, submerged container, um, buoyage, unlit, that sort of thing. So if you do get into a bit of bother, Mayday and Pan Pan are the two likely ones you're going to use. So I said earlier in the video, I would relate to you the very good advice given to us by the RNLI um, from the Port Patrick incident and also from other things over the years where we have talked to the RNLI and the Coast Guard. And basically it comes down to this. If you think you are getting into some sort of trouble, pick up the VHF, talk to the Coast Guard. You will not get to talk to the RNLI. Talk to the Coast Guard. You don't necessarily need to declare a made air pan pan. Just give them an idea of where you are, what sort of trouble you're in, as soon as you think you're in a spot of bother. Now, this doesn't mean a lifeboat is going to come charging out. That's not how this works. What happens is you report it to them, they decide how serious it is. If it's serious enough, they will refer it on to the lifeboat. Somewhere in all this process, there is somebody called the launch authority and they will decide whether that boat's going in the water. It's not your decision. You can make all sorts of requests, you can make all sorts of demands, but at the end of the day, the person who decides whether that lifeboat goes in the water is standing on dry land beside the lifeboat, and that's how it works. So, call up early, because at the end of the day, the earlier you call, the better. If you're two miles off the rocks with engine problems drifting toward the rocks and you let them know, they might make a decision to launch. That's not your call. On the other hand, if you're 100 yards off the rocks and you call, even if they decide to launch, you're probably going to be on the rocks when they get there and they're going to have to come into the rocks to get you off. For them, it's far more dangerous. They would rather come out to you while you're still a mile off the shore and do something safer for you, safer for them. So call early. Just because you're calling the Coast Guard doesn't mean that they will come charging out. A good example of it is uh, our recent trip down to Southwest Ireland where we had the engine spouting water and we couldn't use it. We couldn't cool the engine. We informed the Coast Guard that we were having engine trouble. We were proceeding to Baltimore under sail. We didn't think we needed any assistance at this point, but they, they were just grateful to know that we had informed them. They then asked for our call sign. So uh, what we've done at the moment is um, we have contacted uh, the Coast Guard to basically advise them of things like our length, um, our MMSI number, the number of people on board, uh, with the, we are safe, the boat is safe. Now, the call sign and MMSI number is something you will have on your boat, or should have. If you've got AIS on your boat, you should definitely have it. Of the two, I prefer to give them the call sign. My MMSI number is nine digits. 
my call sign's five characters, and I can just roll it off. It's third in the life thing. It's two hotel golf Zulu seven. Boom, that's it. It's phonetic. Works. Um, what they did was they tracked us on our AS. They kept an eye on us. Well, I'm glad to report. I'm glad to report that our uh, efforts have had some success. We have water coming through the system again. Um, we only ran the engine very briefly, so the plan now is to get ourselves as close as we can to the entrance to Baltimore. Uh, under sail. Under sail. Uh, we will turn the engine on, and if it continues to function, we will sail up through the entrance. We will inform the Coast Guard. Uh, although we tried to sail into Baltimore under sail, we couldn't do it on the particular line we were on, so we tacked away to get a better angle and they immediately called us up because they were following us and said, do we need assistance to come in? And we didn't. We just informed them that we were doing attack and we were coming in on the next on the next beat. And we did so. When we got to our mirroring, we let them know that we were in safely and they said, thank you. No lifeboats were involved in the incident. Um, they did notify the local lifeboat that there was a boat in trouble, but there was no need to launch. They were just notified, they were informed, they were ready in case it arose, but it didn't. So that's in a way like if you want to call it a fourth state of readiness in a way. You're letting them know early that you have a problem. You're letting them know where you are. You're giving them time to find you. You're giving them time to organise. And it may never be necessary to launch. But at the same time, if they have to go, the earlier they go, the safer it is for them, the safer it is for you. So don't be afraid to pick up the microphone. Don't be afraid to discuss your problems with them. They will let you know if they don't think it's serious or they're not going to launch or anything. Um, they may decide it is more serious than you've assessed and they may launch anyway. But leave those decisions up to people on dry land who have got slightly less pressure on them than you will if you're in a situation where things have gone pear-shaped. So that's basically it. Um, we have started off a just giving account. Uh, we have put this month's Google earnings, which isn't a lot, we earn a pound a day from Google. But we've put it in to kick it off and it's a nice start. So if you want to contribute to the RNLI's 200 years, we're trying to raise 200 pounds. There'll be a link down below and in the description. And we encourage you to do it because I'll tell you now, when you do need them, there is no feeling as good as seeing that blue and orange lifeboat approach your boat. I'm telling you now, it, the feeling of relief is overwhelming. And someday you may need them. They're supported entirely by charitable donation. So Give them something, because one day it might be you they're calling out to see. I do hope you enjoyed our little chat, and um, we have decided that uh, because we've got a lot to do uh, over the next two weeks, uh, which unfortunately has got nothing to do with sailing or even boats, uh, that we will not be putting a video out next week. We will be back in another fortnight, as always, we have no idea what that will be on, but uh, do keep on watching and we'll try and keep it interesting for you. So see you then. Bye.